So I grew up in Sugarland, Texas, and in Oklahoma and Texas, there's this big Texas country scene. My first concert was the Soul to Soul tour, you know, with Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Oh, yeah. That was the first time I saw a full-blown production concert, and I think that's kind of what sparked it for me. And then my parents bought me a karaoke machine, and that was the biggest mistake of their lives. I grew up in Ada, Oklahoma, and you know, for me, I just remember seeking out music. I started singing in church at a young age, and talent shows, everything I could get involved in, I was trying. And then my brothers played baseball, so I sang the national anthem a lot for them. And I just, I loved everything about singing. My whole dad's side of the family, they play flute, they play trumpet. I grew up playing trumpet like my dad, because I wanted to be like my dad. And so just instruments were everywhere, and that's, that's all I knew. So I'm going to apologize to my sweet dad before I say this, um, <laughs> but he cannot hold a tune in a bucket. My mom, to get money, she'd go sing at weddings and stuff, and so I think that's where the voice came from. I just remember always having that vision. It was, I was either going to do it or do nothing at all. For me, music was my end all be all. At the end of freshman year, I came home and I told my mom I wanted to be homeschooled and pursue music 100%, learn how to write, learn how to play, just dive in. God sent me this Mandy had a home studio in Kingston, Oklahoma. This was a godsend, and I did two cover CDs with him. He was the first person outside of my family to really, really, I could truly see that he believed in me. It wasn't until I met Maddie that I started really pursuing, because we, we were met the same vocal coach, and I went to him when I was 16 and went to him for about three months, and then I met Maddie. My thing was like, okay, I'm gonna graduate and go to college, but I, I really wanna do music, but I just, I don't know if that's realistic, you know, but Tay and was realistic like... realistic is not in my vocabulary. Exactly. <laughs> so she's like, I'm going to do this, and it's going to work, and da 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 and like, that's her mindset. I feel like I've, I was born with this mindset that just ignored everyone saying negative things and went for it. That's when I started asking my mom to take me to Nashville, and she was so confused because she was like, how do you even know what Nashville is? Because I started saying that in third grade, and I was like, I don't know, I saw it on TV. I saw the Grand Ole Opry on TV. I want to go. I'd trade a first class seat in for your arms. The sun comes up and it sinks back down on every five-star dream in every two-star To succeed in Nashville, one, you have to be able to perform. That's the first, and that's the only, and if you can't do that, it's over. I just remember being so blown away with how many people were out there singing and playing every single day, 24-7, there was someone playing music on the street. Everyone's talented. That's what's yeah. crazy. You're fighting for the stream, and so are millions of other people. We really just played anywhere we could, puckets, restaurants, um, anywhere and we open our guitar cases so that people hopefully would put like a dollar bill in. <laughs> and we put our guitars on and we started playing and um, people put money in. Oh they, yeah, they and were, stayed and like yeah. watched. Artists often ask me, what does it take? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? And the truth is my answer is always the same. It's, you have to be undeniable. And that can be a, a myriad of different things for a myriad of different people, but whatever that is for Maddie and Tay, they have it. We wrote songs and everything, but by the second session that we were in a room together writing was like, okay, there's something really, really cool here. We kind of started, you know, getting the attention of the town a little bit, you know, with the writers. Like the writers were really impressed with how young we were and, you know, um, what types of songs we were writing and everything. The first time that I saw Maddie and Tay, they came into the studio. And when you have these two tiny females with these two gigantic guitars, it's kind of funny to see. And then when they start to sing and play, and when Maddie starts to sing lead and Tay singing harmonies and playing guitar, you can tell they're best friends. They leave the room and we all talk about them afterward. We're like, wow, they are so good. People have no idea how good these two girls really are. I remember the first time we played Girl in a Country Song was this place called The Listening Room. Everyone was cracking up. We were so nervous. We were like, this is like the anti whatever's going on right now song. I think um, them taking a chance on such young girls, that's, that's a huge risk. And I think that shows a lot about the community of Nashville and just how much people really do believe in each other. They want everyone to succeed and each publishing label is like a little neighborhood and thankfully we found our home with Big Machine. Surrounding them with this cool group of people that we have um, has allowed them to kind of become comfortable here and 
be okay with moving away 2,000 miles from home when they're 17 years old. Watching them as they've grown from being struggling 17 year olds who live in small apartments to having a little celebrity and all that stuff. The coolest part for me is to watch how much they do want to give back. For example, yesterday they were at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital and to watch them go into that environment and use the, the skills and the tools that they have for good is pretty cool. There's a campaign called Shine Bright uh, for the Children's Hospital. It's basically you write little letters and notes for the kids and hang them up all in the hospital. And God's given us this really special gift. And um, we want to be a light in other people's lives and give music to them that gives them hope and brightens their day. With something that we're so passionate about as powerful women, we want to share that message. We have this opportunity to speak to the world. We were still going to write music that we believed in. That was never going to change. It's only right that we get back. It's our way of saying thank you. State Farm celebrates great artists and the good neighbors back home who help make them who they are today. Watch more artist stories at NeighborhoodSessions.com.